Okay. Yeah, if you go to page three, the question where it says scaling a vector, let's go ahead and talk about that. So scaling a vector is the same thing as multiplying. So whenever you scale a vector, that means that you are stretching it in a sense, but you're not changing the angle of its projection. So when you multiply a vector, this is kind of similar to what we did yesterday when we talked about operations of vectors. If I know I have vector V, vector V is, has a horizontal component of five and a vertical component of negative six, then what would two times vector V equal? So go ahead and find that. I bet you can do that on your own. What do you think your answer would be? All right, did anyone say 10, negative 12? That's it, that's all that's to it. Okay, so we're gonna actually skip the rest of page three and go to page four. And page four is our only page we're gonna do today. Monday and Tuesday, we'll finish out the word problems. You'll get your study guide on Tuesday for Friday's test. Okay, so dot product. This is the, I guess, fifth formula that you need to memorize. So how do you find the dot product? We need to use the dot product in order to find the angle. So dot product is when, this is how you multiply vectors together. All right, if I wanna multiply vectors together, I'm gonna take my two horizontal components, multiply them, and then my two vertical components, multiply them and then add it together. That's it. Okay, so I wanna multiply these two vectors together. Let's go ahead and label this. So this would be my first vector and my second vector. And let's multiply our X values together. So I'm multiplying my X and then I'm also gonna multiply my Y. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have three times negative two plus five times four. So that would be negative six plus 20. So the dot product is 12. Go ahead and do the second one by yourself. Yep, it'll have, if you see that little, um, it'll say find, so on the test, it'll say find V times W. So this little multiplication symbol, that means you're finding the dot product. Yeah, good question. Oh, you can't see it because I have my screen frozen, sorry. I'll rewrite it at the end because I want, I want you all to find example two first. You know what, I did that first period too. Why did I, why do I keep doing that? And you all just believe me. Don't believe me guys. Who am I? What do I know? I said the same thing first period. They were like, isn't it 14? I'm, I don't know why, I guess in my mind, I just really want it to be 12. I just really want it to be 12, but it's 14, you're right. All right, who got 11 for the second one? So how is this going to look on the test? On the test, it's going to say, I don't know. I don't know if it says the actual words, find dot product. It could just say find, make this a little thicker. It could say find that. It could just say V times W. So that little multiplication symbol, when it's asking you to multiply two vectors together, that means you're finding the dot product. So if it says that, then this is your formula. 
Okay, so we actually need to use this for the next two questions, and this is our last two, example one and two, and that's it for today, is when we're trying to find, if you have two vectors and we're trying to figure out the angle between the vectors. So for example, you don't have to write this down, but if this is vector V and vector W would be like over here. If I'm trying to find this angle, the angle form between the two vectors, this is your next formula. Now this formula, however, is given to you on the test. So I'm gonna put a green, this is given. So this formula here is actually provided to you, so you don't need to memorize that. But I wanna talk about the pieces of this formula so you'll know what it means. So again, this notation at the very top See how it says V times W? That means that you're gonna use the dot product. So in the top, you're gonna to find your, first thing you're gonna do is find your dot product. And we're gonna multiply those two vectors together. Does anybody remember from yesterday what these two double brackets mean? Magnitude. magnitude. And then you're going to find the magnitude of each vector. Okay. And then to find theta, you're taking the inverse cosine of this fraction. So let's go ahead and do that together. Let me zoom back out. Okay, so let's start off by finding our dot product. So everybody find your dot product so dot product, this is my x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. Find your dot product. So then we have our dot product, and now we need to find the magnitude of each vector. So to find the magnitude, now these two, this is my horizontal and vertical component. So remember the formula for magnitude? For magnitude, you're taking, so I'm gonna find the magnitude of vector V. In order to find that magnitude, I'm taking the square root of three squared plus five squared. Don't change it to a decimal, and I'll explain why in a minute. We're just going to leave it under the square root. <clears throat> so that's 9 plus 25, which should be 34. And now I'm going to find the magnitude of vector W, which is simply negative 2. Always put it in parentheses if you're squaring a negative. So what's that? Four plus 16 is 20. Okay, so now we're ready to put this all together. So anytime you find an angle, you have to use the inverse cosine, or the inverse, okay? So in my calculator, my angle is gonna equal the inverse cosine. And now I'm simply gonna create my fraction. In my numerator, I have my dot product, which was what? 14. 14. And then my denominator, I'm multiplying the square root of 34 times the square root of 20. So go ahead and type that in your calculator just like that. And we'll go out to the thousandth place. Give me three decimals.
a nasty angle in between your back ribs. So this, these two angles form um, a 57.529 degree angle in between. All right, so go ahead and start working on the next example and we'll in there find your dot product and find the magnitude of each vector. All right, so who had 90 degrees as their answer? So for your dot product, when you multiply negative two times nine plus negative three times negative six, you got zero. Who got zero for the dot product? Okay. And then we had our magnitude of vector B was root 13. The magnitude of vector w is root 117 so here's the thing though when you get a dot product of zero you can really stop right there because zero divided by anything is going to be what zero anytime your dot product is zero your angle will automatically be 90 degrees okay so the next page, at the very top of page five, that should have been at the bottom of page four. So this definition at the very top of page, page five, it says whenever your dot product is zero, then the vectors are orthogonal, okay? What does that mean? That just means, that's a very fancy math term, and that just means that they form a right angle. So, if you're asked to prove or determine if two vectors are orthogonal, the only thing you need to do is find the dot product. Because if your dot product is zero, it will form a right angle. And this is an example of what that would look like. I have to check Canvas. I believe I said Tuesday. And I think 18 is due Wednesday. 